So ironically, Sudan's death comes as hundreds of scientists and government envoys gather in Colombia at a biodiversity crisis summit for a global appraisal of the mass species extinction. Kenya was once home to 20,000 rhinos, but due to the escalation in poaching, is left with only a few hundred black rhino. The world, uh, South Africa included, is battling to get a grip on rhino and elephant poaching. So what does this death signify for the fate of the rhino species? Joining us in the studio is uh, wildlife filmmaker Bonnet Dupont. Uh, good evening to you and uh, thank you for your time. I mean, this is really a sad day and is it an indication that the fight against rhino poaching has, for all intents and purposes, uh, really been lost? Mm. Bongani, uh, an incredible sad day, sad news coming out of Kenya. Uh, you know, Sudan was uh, the last of his kind. He was the last male of the northern white rhino species, subspecies. Uh, you know, we know our rhinos very well. We see them in the Kruger National Park in Fulosi. They are the southern white rhinos. So they are very closely related to the northern uh, white rhino species that Sudan belong to. Now, uh, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, sometime last year, uh, Sudan developed an infection in one of his legs. It was assessed, it was treated, he responded very well. But uh, unfortunately, a secondary infection then started beneath the initial one, and he didn't really respond to treatments uh, for weeks. And uh, unfortunately, I really thought that uh, he will make it, that he will pull through, but he didn't, and it's absolutely heartbreaking. I mean, he was the last remaining male, so in a sense today, mm -hmm. uh, at least, uh, you know, his death brings events to a finality. Right. But in a sense, it was, it, it, it was coming. It was coming, 45 years old. Uh, that's very old for, for a rhino. And I think, yes, we can be upset, we can be angry about Sudan's death, but I think we should rather be, be angry and upset about the fact that humanity has let the subspecies down. Bongani, there should have never left, uh, been only three northern white rhinos left in the first place. Uh, there were 15 individuals in 1984. So how could we let this happen in this modern day of science and, and technology? Uh, there is a slight chance that we can save this species, uh, but it's, it's still, uh, we must see what happens. There's still a, a long way to go. Of course, uh, science and cloning uh, have given us uh, other options. Uh, would, be, would that be the way uh, we might look at this mm -hmm. issue going forward? Well, uh, scientists are looking at, at various options available, including in vitro fertilization. Uh, I want to say, technically, this subspecies has already been extinct for way uh, before Sudan's death because there are only two females left, uh, Sudan's daughters. And because of interbreeding or inbreeding, they, couldn't, they can't uh, produce naturally. The one is sterile and the other one can't uh, carry uh, long term. So now they are looking at this option. So what they would like to do, Bongani, is they would like to collect the eggs of uh, the two remaining females. And uh, they, they did collect the, the sperm from Sudan. And there are also five other uh, male northern white rhinos uh, sperm available. And then they want to fertilize the eggs and implant these eggs into a surrogate, a southern white rhino female. And she will then carry the northern white rhino calf uh, to term. But again, a lot of research needed and a lot of funding needed. So it also brings a, a quite a controversial debate. In, in South Africa, I think we often hear these numbers spewed out every year that, uh, you know, so many rhino have mm. been poached this year and that number goes up or it might go down. There's always the sense that, you know, it's too big to fail. The, 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 the extinction of the mm. rhino in South Africa uh, is contemplated as something that's just too awful to think about. Right. But this is an indication that actually these animals can go extinct. Absolutely. So if we think about our own rhinos, the southern white rhinos, this is a perfect picture, it's a perfect example of Africa losing its heritage. I think what we should take away from Sudan's death is the fact that uh, it was the last male of a subspecies. We in South Africa, Bongani, are losing three rhinos a day, one every eight hours. So we will all go to bed tonight, we will wake up tomorrow morning, and another one of our rhinos is gone. So I think we, we have to learn from this. Surely we have to learn something from this. 
Markets, uh, the way markets work is that, of course, uh, the greater the demand, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the more these things are likely to happen. I mean, as the species looks like it could also go extinct, even with the, uh, the southern rhino, uh, is this just a losing battle that ultimately mm -hmm. it's a waiting game uh, to uh, an awful future? You know, I did some undercover work in Asia, and the demand for rhino horn is massive. Uh, every person wants it. It's a status symbol. If you, can, if you can get your hands onto a piece of rhino horn, well, then you have some sort of, of power. Uh, and that's how people see it, unfortunately. So the demand is massive. So it's how not do just, we stop that demand? So it's not just for medicinal purposes, as we've often heard reported? No. So, uh, yes, medicinal purposes, especially for Vietnamese, but then the Chinese see it as a, st a status symbol. Uh, they also make jewelry, um, libation cups to drink rice wine out of it, uh, out of rhino horn. They, they see it as a, a sort of a detoxifying agent, uh, rhino horn. And that's why everyone basically wants it. And of course, it's popular even in Asia, uh, you know, for, for daggers uh, and, and, and that sort of thing. I mean, are all the messages uh, that uh, we've assumed we're getting through, mm. you know, to where the market is, uh, are those getting through in terms of what this means for the species? Look, I think a lot is being done, but we can always do more, right? And I think, you know, if we look at the history of the, the northern white rhino subspecies, uh, in, in the poaching really took hold in the late 1970s, 80s. And you know, Bongani, what people always think, they have this perception that rhino poaching is a new thing. It started in the 2000s. But it's been going on for a very, very long time. And just to give you an idea, there were more than 2,000 northern white rhinos left in 1960. And that number crashed down to over f uh, 15, just 15 rhinos in 1984 and now we sit with two females left. So again, how did we get there? How did we let this happen in this modern day of science and technology? Well, if you look at the efforts of what has been done in the past, I suppose we could either be depressed and say it can't be done, or we mm. can look back and say there is still a fight to be had here. Thank you very much uh, for your perspective. Uh, sad, sad news there uh, about uh, the death of Sudan. That was wildlife filmmaker Bonet de Bod.